Good morning, naturalist Leisha Johnson here with the Discover at Home program with the North Lakeland Discovery Center in Manitowish Waters, Wisconsin. Our Discover at Home series is a series of programming that we're doing twice a week on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Um, just short little videos that we are posting um, on Facebook, our website, as well as our YouTube channel. Just kind of talking about some of our favorite natural things um, while we're in this time of closure um, here in Wisconsin. And so today we are... Who is, do you get the feeling that you're being watched? Hold on a second. Oh, hello. Who is this? Oh, this is Marvin. Marvin is our muskrat. And so he's been watching the Discover at Home videos and he's seen Petey, he's seen Blair talking, and he wanted to join in today to talk about an interesting topic. I know, I've noticed. If you might notice that poor Marvin is missing um, some fur, so he's gonna help me today tell you all about wonderful things with animal fur. Wisconsin is home to many animals that are covered in fur. Of course, these are our mammals. That's one of their characteristics, so they are covered in fur. Um, we have 19 different fur-bearing species. Um, a fur-bearing species refers to an animal that is covered in fur that is harvested for that fur. So we have many more um, mammals in our state, but we have 19 fur-bearing um, mammals that we have here in Wisconsin. Um, so we're gonna learn a little bit more about each of those and some of their interesting patterns and how to identify some of those critters. One term I'd like to teach you when we talk about animal fur is called a field mark. And a field mark is a special pattern or coloration on an animal's fur that helps you to identify it in some way. So let's say you were walking and all of a sudden this critter ran by. Now, did you get a quick look? Did you get a good look? Do you know what it was? Did you guess a skunk? If you did, you were right. This is a skunk pelt. Um, and so if you look at this skunk, of course, their field mark would be what? Yes, it is the white stripes along their body. So this is a distinguishing coloration or pattern on this animal that helps us to identify it. So this is a very easily identifiable animal. Of course, you have to watch out if they turn and put their backside towards you, run because they could be spraying you with a lovely, lovely scent. A couple other interesting field marks on some animals to help you identify them would be this critter. One field mark, let's see if you can figure out who this is. One field mark is a black mask on the face. A second field mark would be a striped tail. So who is this guy? It is a raccoon. Okay, so this is a raccoon, very common. Um, they're coming out now, they're looking for food and finding garbages and things like that to get into, so be careful with that. But this guy has some interesting field marks with that mask and the striped tail. Who else has an interesting field mark? Let's see. See, oh, how about this guy? Do you know who this is? The field mark being a white stripe down its head. This is our state critter. This is the badger, and you can see they've got long nails as well, but a field mark on their fur, that white stripe helps you to identify the badger. Now we do have two different species of fox here in Wisconsin. Anybody know what those two are? The most common one, obviously, is our red fox, right? Ooh, you, it's okay, he won't get you. And our gray fox. Now these fox are somewhat similar in size. The gray fox is a little bit smaller than the red fox. Um, although the red fox, most people see it in this color phase, it can actually be in several different color phases. It can go into a dark gray phase, it can go into, it almost looks black. Um, with grayish white tips of on the fur. So this can actually go into different color phases and have different color phases within the species. Um, can look very similar to the gray fox here. But a couple things that you'd want to look for on some of these animals as far as the field mark goes is a red fox has black tips on the tops of their ears. So that's a nice field mark there. And probably the best one to look for if you get a good enough look is the tip of the tail of these two different foxes. Now, the red fox always has a white tip tail. The gray fox always has a black tip tail. So no matter what color phase these foxes are in, the tips of their tails are always gonna be the same. So white tip is for the red fox, black tip is for the gray fox. So if you can see that tail, you'll know which one is which. 
Also, if you happen to see a fox in a tree, you would probably be looking at a gray fox because they can actually climb trees where red fox cannot. Let's see, who else do we have here? Oh, all right. Anybody know who this critter is? Let's see a little face here. They've got some interesting patterning field marks on their belly and their legs, some spots, and then their tail is quite short with black on the top and white on the bottom. This is a bobcat, a pretty common critter. We don't often see them though, they're very elusive. Um, but some field marks of a bobcat would be this tail here. It's got just a black tip on the top where the bottom is actually white. Um, and then they also have these cool spots on their stomach and their legs. So all of these different things are field marks. One other little critter that you might recognize is this guy. It's a little chipmunk. His fur has some nice stripes in it. So again, those are field marks, those identifying patternings and colors um, in animal fur. Well, some mammals' fur has special patterns to help them to be identified. Some animals' fur is really special and helps keep them alive. Well, all fur helps keep animals alive, but some is particularly interesting. Uh, the first one I wanna show you here is this little guy. And this is a weasel, um, a short-tailed weasel, and actually this guy, his tail is missing, so he's a no-tailed weasel, which really doesn't exist. <laughs> but this is a summer pelt um, for this animal. So you can see they're brown on the top and white on the bottom. They're a long, skinny um, member of the weasel family. And in the wintertime, though, their fur turns white, and so they look like this. It's the same species, same animal, just their fur is completely white in the wintertime. This is an adaptation that they have to help blend in to the snow. Now, this happens over six weeks, so over six weeks during the fall, their fur starts to grow in white, and then right now in the spring, their fur is starting to grow back in brown. Um, what triggers this is not temperature, it's not snowfall, it is the amount of daylight that we have every day. So the longer the days become during the spring, the body starts to produce brown fur. Snowshoe hair also have this cool adaptation. Um, so the ermine, the short-tailed weasels, have really neat, neat fur there. Another unique animal with fur would be, let's see, this guy here. This animal actually has two types of fur, and it is a beaver. And they actually have two different types of fur. They have an outer guard hair, which if you can see is kind of these long, shiny hairs here. And then underneath is more of, it almost looks like it's curly. It's a really thick, dense under fur. Now these animals, they actually have a special oil, a castor oil that they spread with their, they have a split toenail on their back foot that they'll brush through their fur to keep them waterproof. Cause this animal is active year round and is in and out of the water. And so it's important to stay waterproof but they do have that, the two different types of fur um, to keep them nice and warm. Other aquatic critters that have special fur is the river otter. They also have the two different types of fur, this kind of guard hair, and then a thick, dense under fur. Now this fur is really, really cool because if you were to take one square inch of fur, a patch of fur off this animal, and count the hairs, they have about 375,000 hairs in one square inch. Now that's not the most in the world. The, the critter that has the densest fur or the most hairs per square inch, it's an otter. It's actually the sea otter and they can have up to 1 million hair follicles in one square inch on their fur, which is really, really incredible. The last few furs I wanna introduce you to are kind of unique and fun. Um, the first one is this fur. Anyone recognize this? It's a, an animal that is hunted quite a bit in the fall. Um, it is the white-tailed deer. Now deer have unique fur to other mammals in the fact that their fur is actually hollow. So if you were to take a piece of your hair or you know a piece of bear hair or your dog's hair and you were to bend it, it would just kind of bend into a nice kind of oval shape. But if you took a deer hair, I don't know if you can, can see this, um, if you bend deer hair, it actually kinks. It kind of forms a jagged point. Um, and that is because this hair is hollow. So it's very much like a hose. If you take a hose and bend it, it actually kinks. Um, so it kind of you know, really bends at the top there. It kind of pinches shut. Um, that is what this deer hair does. And that air inside there actually helps keep this animal warm. Air um, traps heat, and so it helps keep them um, 
you know, nice and toasty, especially during the winter months and they lose a lot of fur. The fur thins out during the summertime. So that is some unique fur. So if you ever find tufts of fur in the woods and you pick up a piece of it, of course, um, maybe you wear gloves so you don't know where it came from. Um, but if you were to bend it and it does do that little kink and not like a nice round bend, you probably have deer hair because that is hollow, which is unique. And if you saw last week, Miss Annie talked about bears. And so black bear fur is pretty cool. It actually doesn't always come in black. Um, if you see a bear in Wisconsin, it kind of has brownish fur. Don't think automatically that it's a brown bear because we don't have those here. Um, but black bear can come in what they call a cinnamon color. It's kind of a reddish color. They can be blonde, which is more of kind of like a light yellow. Um, and they can also be a white, which they call a spirit bear. So black bears also, their fur does not always have to be black. It can be brown, shades of brown, and even a blondish color. So that's pretty unique. Now I think that is pretty much all the furs we wanted to talk about. Is there... Oh, there was one more fur that, that we didn't talk about. Now, Marvin, I'll have to explain, he lost his fur to some mice that took it um, for nesting material. And so, you know what, Marvin, you helped so good today. You were so patient and understanding. We have one more fur that we want to show you. It is muskrat fur. And of course, muskrat live in the water with beavers and where otters are. And so they too have a nice, dense, thick fur. And poor Marvin here is missing his fur. So we're going to go ahead and give him his beautiful fur. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. We hope you learned a little bit more about fur and enjoyed our talk today. Um, one thing I did want to mention, here's my fun beaver hat. Um, traditionally, fur was very important um, to indigenous cultures. It was used for blankets, clothing, regalia. Um, people still use fur today, um, whether it be from trapping and things like that. I did want to mention that all of the pelts that we have here at the Discovery Center were given to us by the DNR, um, were legally trapped and donated to the center. Um, one other critter I did want to show you too is the American Martin. This is a really neat fur-bearing animal. It actually has some of the softest fur in the entire state. Um, and it's actually endangered because that fur is so soft. But they have a really cool orange patch on their throat. Now these guys really live in a kind of old growth cedar forest. We don't have a lot of that around here. Um, but they are in the state, more kind of northern. I won't say exactly where, but they're out there. It's pretty cool. Um, but do you remember what it's called when an animal has this interesting pattern or coloration on their fur? Right, it is a field mark. Um, so this is a unique field mark to the American Martin, which is a neat fur-bearing mammal in the state of Wisconsin. All right, well, thank you again so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn more about our Discover at Home series, see past videos, learn more about the Discovery Center and how you can support us by registering for programs or becoming a member, please visit us at discoverycenter.net. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.